crypto has not had that moment yet where it's your grandma, your little brother, your little sister all have to use it for different reasons, maybe. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Daily Crypto. We are back again with yet another video, and this time, we have Mark Cuban with us today. But before we get into the video, let's see where we are with the FNG index today. As of recording this video, it is at 27, down from yesterday's 34. Currently, Bitcoin and Ethereum are trading for 20,216.02 respectively. With that being said, let's get right into the video. I'm always into tech. I'm always looking for new opportunities and I always look for new ways to do business. I'm an entrepreneur. And so, you know, when you dig in on crypto, like all new technologies, I mean, just to give you some background for a point of reference, you know, we started a company in 1994 called AudioNet, which was the first streaming company, um, first commercial streaming company, let's say. Um, and then in 2000, you know, so I took, you know, we looked at new um, applications for using the internet, right? That was when the internet was just getting started. Um, and then in 2000, I started the first all high definition TV network. And so I'm always looking for new ways to use technology in new ways. Um, and so when crypto started to happen, um, I'd always paid attention and wasn't as excited about it as a currency, but saw unique applications. And what really got me grooving on it was in 2020, when I started just get, trying to get updated on NFTs and started to really dig in and more importantly, understand what smart contracts are about. Because the beauty of NFTs wasn't the NFT itself, it was the fact that it was an application using smart contracts and what else could smart contracts be used for. And then you start digging into the decentralization side of it. And I'm not one of these guys, oh, it's all about decentralization for the, the trilemma and all that kind of stuff. I saw it more as a way to create new app, new ways of doing business. Mark is a firm believer in Bitcoin and has been invested into cryptocurrencies since 2017. He says what initially attracted him towards Bitcoin were the massive use case potential it had. Later on, he kept learning and he now understands why cryptocurrencies and smart contracts are so important for the financial sector. It's, it's not, yes, it, it does concern me, but it doesn't diminish my bullishness on crypto. Um, you know, if you go back over the last few years, um, you know, let's just go back 2020, um, we saw the DeFi summer and that brought a lot of new people in and it created a lot of applications that particularly for Ethereum and some L2s, that really got people involved and brought people to the table for Ethereum in particular. And those applications make total sense. You know, you go on Aave and you put some money in, you deposit, you borrow, it takes 30 seconds. You know, you need to pull out some USDC to go pay a credit card bill. And now you can do that, right? So DeFi went from being something new that brought a lot of people in. People were using their stimulus checks. Rates were really high back then. You, can, you could yield farm and it was crazy as everybody was figuring it out. You had a lot of investor money coming in, subsidizing yields. And so you really had, um, you, you had this groundswell of people coming to crypto and that was great. It was a unique application that really put people to work. Then you saw the same thing with NFTs. People started collecting them, whether it was on Flow with um, Top Shot or it was on Ethereum with, you know, Punks or whatever, you know, Bored Apes, whatever it may be. And everything and anything was being created and everything sold at the beginning, right? But, you know, and that brought in a ton of people, still brought in a ton of people. So you had NFTs as a cool application that led to utilization. Because the thing about crypto that I think people sometimes fail to realize is you need users in order for people to buy and use the Ethereum or whatever it may be, right? To generate gas fees. Mark says he isn't too concerned about the macro conditions as crypto adoption continues to rise to record highs. More and more people are using cryptocurrencies in their daily lives. Macro factors may affect the dollar price of a digital asset, but it can affect the underlying use case of that asset. This is why the crypto space is seeing millions of new users every single year. But listen to what Mark has to say about the metaverse. Then, you know, in 2004, you saw Facebook and social networks hit, and then you saw um, app stores hit, you know, when in 2007, when um, the iPhone came out, 
So we're, we're looking for that App Store iPhone, you know, platforming moment where there's new applications that bring in a lot of non-traditional crypto users. Because, you know, the, the, the thing that's going to drive crypto above and beyond just the cryptoites is something where you just have to use it. You know, you just need to use it. Like, you know, I'll use the App Store again as an example, whether it's, you know, um, Play Store on Android or iOS App Store. You know, someone uh, posted something on Twitter that was great. Um, one of the top 10 applications was just an app that made it look like you're drinking a beer, you know, or you had angry birds. That wasn't enough to make you um, go buy an iPhone. But as people started buying iPhones and the foundation was there, it would became an, um, an ecosystem where it made sense for people to invest a lot of money in apps. And what happened? Everybody who created an app, right? There were zillions of them, right? And 99.99% of them failed. But there were the few of them, the Instagrams, the Snapchats, et cetera, where it said, okay, you know, this is why I need a smartphone. I need that camera. I need to be able to use this app. Crypto has not had that moment yet where it's your grandma, your little brother, your little sister, all have to use it for different reasons maybe, but they need to use crypto because that's how they get access to the applications that they really want to have and want to use every single day. Crypto is still a rather new asset class and is yet to grow. Mark believes we haven't seen crypto explode into mainstream use till now, and it is a huge opportunity just waiting to be exploited. Bitcoin right behind. Um, I did really well with Helium, um, but, and, I, and I sold right at the top, I got lucky. You know, um, in terms of one I missed out on, none that I really wish, you know, because I got in early enough that a lot of them were really cheap. I could take flyers, you know, buying Polygon and under a penny, you know, those types of things. So there hasn't really been one that I truly missed out. Now I've timed some of them wrong. I lightened up on a bunch of stuff and um, on Ethereum and Bitcoin. So I lightened up and some I got out really well and some, I, you know, um, um, I sold lower than where it is now, but that's okay. You can't time it always. Since Mark going early in 2017, he was able to buy some big name cryptocurrencies like Ethereum and Polygon Matic for extremely cheap prices. He says these were some of his most successful crypto bets. Obviously it's great to go proof of stake and proof of work, right? For all the environmental reasons, then with 1559, you're gonna potentially have deflation, right? So that brings up an in interesting corollary, inflation versus utilization. Because as utilization goes up and the value of a token goes up, then the cost to do something goes up. And so you have these two competing interests. Hey, I wanna create an app that generates a million NFTs a day. Right, just picking something out of left field, right? I'm not saying there is one. Well, if the value of Ethereum keeps on going up because there's a deflationary spiral going on because of 1559, now all of a sudden, where's the equilibrium? And then there's the question of all the stakers with staking ETH, right? With you know, now there it's it's staged on when they can get out, but will they and how quickly? And what happens to the stake to eat steep, you know, along that period of time? And what does that do for the pricing? So there's a lot of uncertainty. And you're seeing a lot of people speculating by buying call options, right? The, the option rate versus Bitcoin is, is through the roof. So it remains to be seen, but, but it's hard. It's going to be really hard to determine. There is no denying that the F merge will be a game changer because of its yield and deflationary nature. But Mark is a bit skeptical about the whole merge because it has some complexities too like how will the staked F affect the price if users decide to pull out of it early. Thank you for watching this video. Please drop a like and subscribe to our channel so you never miss another upload. Stay tuned for the next video.